going to be at B, and this is facial, this is superior vestibular, inferior vestibular. Uh, and here we see the cochlea. The basal turn sets in this cochlear angle. The middle turn, the apical turn, comes forward under the greater petrosal nerve. It's nestled right against the back of the tensor tympani. Uh, so, and coming through the middle fossa, you can drill out three approaches. One goes to the internal acoustic meatus that's hidden here behind the superior canal. The second comes through the petrous apex under the trigeminal nerve down to the side of the inferior petrosal sinus adjacent to where the sixth nerve passes through Dorello's canal. And when you're drilling medially through the petrous apex, it's easy to have spread of heat to the sixth nerve. I've seen a number of transient sixth nerve palsies from spread of heat to that nerve at the medial part of the anterior petrosectomy. The third approach through you, you can take through the middle fossa is an extended middle fossa approach where you can expose and drill out the labyrinth to get into the posterior fossa. So here we're just looking now at uh, the facial nerve, geniculate ganglion, greater petrosal, cochlea setting in the cochlear angle, and behind is the vestibule into which the three canals open. And if you're going to the internal acoustic meatus through the middle fossa, the drilling is very tight at the fundus of the meatus. If you get a millimeter off target and drilling out over the labyrinthine segment, you get into the cochlea or the vestibule, uh, and hearing is lost, and usually in these approaches, they're designed to preserve hearing. And here between the facial and superior vestibular is the Bill's Bar, the vertical crest, named for Bill House, who uh, introduced this middle fossa approach. Now, if you look at the area of the porous of the meatus, there's lots of room over the nerves at the porous. It's very tight at the fundus so that uh, when we drill out the internal acoustic meatus, we start today, well, in the past, they followed the greater petrosal to the labyrinthine segment, very tight drilling, easy to enter the cochlea, and then work toward the porous but today we've learned it's best to work from the porous to the fundus of the meatus that there's lots of room around the nerves back here below the petrous ridge, but here at the fundus, the geniculate ganglion is just below the floor of the middle fossa. Sometimes it's even exposed in the floor of the middle fossa but to get to the nerves in the porous, there's quite a thickness of bone below the petrous ridge so that when you begin drilling at the petrous ridge above the porous, you have to go through a lot of bone to get down to the dura around the nerves at the porous. But then as you work toward the fundus to expose the meatus, you're coming progressively more superficial, and the labyrinthine segment is just below the floor of the middle fossa. So that if we look from the back at this temporal bone, what is this depression? Trigeminal, and this is 
trigeminal prominence, meatal depression above the internal acoustic meatus, and then arcuate eminence, and this area is tegment. So at surgery, we're usually elevating this dura and looking at it upside down. And here we see the greater petrosal, Kawazi's triangle, trigeminal depression, uh, trigeminal prominence, meatal depression, arcuate eminence. But if you look at the external canal here and side down it, that's going to be almost directly in a line with the internal acoustic meatus. The other way of deciding how to drill out the internal acoustic meatus is to take and create an angle between the greater petrosal and the arcuate eminence. That angle is usually about 120 degrees and then you bisect that angle and you lock the retractor on top of the Petrus Ridge and you begin drilling here above the porous, which is deep but wide with lots of rooms around the nerves to the fundus where it, the nerve is going to be very superficial but the drilling is going to be very tight. So we've drilled now from porous to fundus. We see here what segment? Labyrinthine segment. And uh, so that we can drill three approaches, one through the petrous apex, one to the internal acoustic meatus, the other drill out the labyrinth and do an extended middle fossa approach. So here we've now drilled out medial to the meatus, the anterior petrosectomy approach, down to the clivus and the inferior petrosal sinus. We see the ica, the sixth nerve medially, and the anterior petrosectomy approach. This is what nerve? Passes under. Grover's ligament, that's six. Fourth, third nerve, running above it. Pecan, superior cerebellar artery, ICA. So you want to have all of these relationships. So now, you can expose this area of the middle fossa through an OZ for just going to the uh, middle fossa approach to the meatus or the anterior petrosectomy. We can do a temporal craniotomy centered above the posterior root of the zygoma. We elevate the dura and here we see greater petrosal. Now, when we're exposing the, the triangles in the cavernous sinus, we peel this dura backwards, but if you're peeling from front to back at the greater petrosal, it's easy to get under the nerve and a full set. So when we want to expose this area in the greater petrosal, we get in posteriorly we elevate this dura forward, and usually that dura peels up off of the greater petrosal nerve. And in about 16% of cases, lateral to the trigeminal, we see the geniculate ganglion exposed under the dura in the floor of the middle fossa. And not only is the ganglion exposed, but you see some of the what segment? <coughs> Labyrinthine and here tympanic segment exposed under the dura. So you want to be very careful in this area. 
if you're going to do just an approach to the internal acoustic meatus, you can often save the middle meningeal artery, which does send some blood supply to the facial nerve. Uh, but for drilling out the anterior petrosectomy, we usually need to sacrifice the middle meningeal artery. And so the two most common approaches that we take to this area are either the approach to the internal acoustic meatus, bisecting this angle between the greater petrosal and arcuate eminence that overlies the superior canal, and we begin drilling at the petrous ridge and work toward the fundus. For the anterior petrosectomy, we drill medially under the trigeminal nerve down to the side of the clivus. And here we've opened the meatus working from porous to fundus, and this is what nerve? Facial, cochlear, intermedius that could be made up as many as four bundles, superior vestibular, inferior vestibular. Okay, well everyone passes that course. And this just shows you at the fundus how close the cochlea and the vestibule are. Facial nerve, superior vestibular, cochlear, inferior vestibular, and this is Bill's bar, and this is transverse crest at the fundus. So the anterior petrosectomy approach, we drill medially to the porous behind the greater petrosal nerve. The carotid, if you drill this bone, you'll find it just under the, the greater petrosal nerve. You drill under the superior petrosal sinus, down under the third trigeminal division to the side of the clivus along the inferior petrosal sinus. And then you open the temporal dura and divide the superior petrosal sinus, uh, and then you divide the tenth. So the approach looks something like this. You open the temporal dura and elevate the temporal lobe, always taking care to preserve lobe. And then we divide the tent, taking care to preserve the fourth nerve at the medial edge. And it gives you this approach to the anterolateral brain stem. Uh, you have exposure above and below the trigeminal nerve, and it delivers you down to the side of the basilar artery. So some surgeons, if they're going to go to a low basilar bifurcation, drew do transcavernous approach through the clinoidal and oculomotor triangle, and others do an anterior petrosectomy that opens up this area between the pons and the clivus to reach a low basilar bifurcation. And what nerve is this? Six, 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 six nerve passing below Gerber's ligament. So this is just another one of these exposures of uh, internal acoustic meatus, facial nerve, the labyrinthine segment, tympanic segment, greater petrosal nerve, the cochlea. I'll even buy three cups of coffee tomorrow <laughs> at breakfast for anyone that can expose the basal turn the middle turn and the apical turn of the cochlea in this cochlear angle. So that's a 3D tour through the middle fossa. Uh, thank you.